This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. To be president means to have a lot on your plate, a lot of responsibility. The health and welfare of almost 350 million Americans. It means the defense, providing for the common defense of the nation, being the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. It means a lot. It's an important, maybe the most important job on the planet, because what happens here, even economically, affects countries all across the world. What happens here ripples out across the globe and affects other countries. That's not to say that the the president is the be-all, end-all of everything. He's certainly not as a position, but absolutely important. One of the reasons why we need to vet the candidates well, vet the, the people for whom we vote for president. Right now, we have a man who is historically incompetent, historically unqualified, for the position. And I'm going to talk about three different tweets that he tweeted out on the 12th. Because Donald Trump invests more time on Twitter than he does his actual duties as president. Donald Trump, it's been reported many, many, many times about his time, the time that he doesn't spend in the Oval Office of the White House. (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, The the executive time, they call it, in the White House. That he's up in the the residence watching television, watching Fox News, watching the, the cable morning shows, rather than doing his job, rather than being up bright and early in the Oval Office to deal with the business of the country. Especially in times like this while we face the coronavirus. Because as as I'm speaking right now, give you the updated numbers. There are over 1.3 million confirmed cases of coronavirus and 83,249 Americans have died as a result. At least, at least 83,249 Americans have died due to coronavirus. Those numbers are being updated. And Donald Trump has time to tweet some of the following. At 7, excuse me, two, three hours ahead, 10.56 a.m. on May 12th, remember this. Every governor who has sky-high approval on their handling of the coronavirus, and I am happy for them all, could in no way have gotten those numbers or have that success without me and the federal government's help. From ventilators to testing, we made it happen. So, I'm happier for all of them who have sky-high approval ratings, but without me, 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 without the help of the Tangerine Titan, they wouldn't be well-liked, as well-liked as they are right now. Because he is obsessed with approval ratings, he is obsessed with ratings, he is just obsessed with what people think about him. Which is bizarre, knowing that well over half the country despises him, is opposed to him. Well over half the country disapproves of his job performance. Just before that, 11 minutes before that, he tweeted, bragging about his his judges and the Second Amendment, saying... So interesting to see all these people I beat so badly, pundits and consultants that never had a chance telling me how to run for office. Many are Republicans who should love our 280 new judges, rebuilt military, Second Amendment, great Veterans Administration, low taxes, etc. Just don't like that I beat them. First of all, Let's address a couple of these things. 280 new radical right-wing unqualified 
judges, many of whom are deemed unqualified by the American Bar Association, who are getting confirmed by Mitch McConnell's Senate. Secondly, rebuilt military. We're spending more on our military than we ever have before. We don't need to. We spend more on our military, the United States military, than like the next eight countries do combined. If you combine the spending of the, 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 the next eight countries, it doesn't equal ours. We don't need the military we have right now. It doesn't need to be that. And now he, and he's also taken credit for the Second Amendment. Apparently he's a lot older than we, than we think. And, you know, he was born right around 1789. Had a, had a hand in crafting the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. And then, of course, the great VA, you know, Veterans Choice, which Obama signed, which Donald Trump takes credit for, and low taxes. His eye is not on the ball. He's not focusing on what it needs to be focusing on, which is the 83,249 Americans who have now died, largely due to his inaction in response to this pandemic. And then the piece de resistance, just before that tweet, apparently watching Joe Scarborough, who had just reported on uh, polling numbers being down for Donald Trump, he tweets this gem. Again, the president of the United States of America, and we already know Sean Spicer has said that a statement from the Twitter account of the president of the United States is an official statement. It is an official record. President of the United States, when will they open a cold case on the psycho Joe Scarborough matter in Florida? Did he get away with murder? Some people think so. Why did he leave Congress so quietly and quickly? Isn't it obvious what's happening now? A total nut job. That's the president of the United States of America accusing a former sitting member of Congress of murder. Sit with that. Donald Trump is accusing Joe Scarborough from Morning Joe on MSNBC of murder. And if he truly believed it, why isn't he not dispatching the FBI, the Justice Department, the full weight of the United States government to bring to justice a murderer. Well, he's not doing that because it's a debunked conspiracy theory. According, well, well let me give a little background. There was a, a, a staffer in his office named Lori Klausudis. And in 2001, she was found dead in his office. His office in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. This is a conspiracy theory. According to the Associated Press, an autopsy revealed that Klaus Sudis had an undiagnosed heart condition and a coroner concluded she passed out and hit her head as she fell. The coroner said the injury caused the death, but she wasn't struck by another person. The death occurred a month after Scarborough announced he was leaving office. Scarborough was in Washington when Klaus Sudis died. So, the death officially has been ruled not a murder, that she had an undiagnosed heart condition that they found when they did the autopsy, that she had passed out, she fell down, and she struck her head on the corner of a desk, which is what caused her death. And then that he left so quickly and quietly from office, this happened after he announced he was going to leave office. There was no, oh, I, I killed this woman and now I have to leave. None of that happened. Because Donald Trump, the president, is a conspiracy theory idiot. He is a behemoth of brainlessness. Joe, I almost called him Morning Joe. Joe Scarborough addressed this on one of his programs recently. Listen to this. And you actually tweeted something uh, extraordinarily cruel. Um, and I know you meant to be extraordinarily cruel to me by attacking me, 
by bringing up a conspiracy theory that has lived in the gutters of the Internet for some time now. But just like the Seth Rich conspiracy murder uh, 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 that was pushed by your allies, you don't understand the pain you cause. You cause to families who have already lost a loved one. Not me, not my children, not anybody that knows me or they know the truth. But you once again drag a family through this and make them relive it again just like Seth Rich's parents. As if live, losing a loved one the first time isn't enough. But this weekend, my God, you were supposed to have a working weekend. You got it wrong again. You said 50,000 deaths, 60,000 deaths. Now you're saying 100,000 deaths. What was your working weekend? What did you do during your working weekend? Exactly. L l let's set aside that this is a conspiracy theory. Let's set aside that Donald Trump has other things going on right now. Let, let's set that si aside for a second. A man that we should be leaning on for compassion and empathy for others is punching down. He is reopening old wounds of this family. Imagine having a daughter or a sister who died tragically in a natural freak accident. And you deal with that. You try to get some kind of closure if there ever is an, a, a possibility of even getting closure. And then you have this monkey getting on Twitter and reopening that wound, trying to bring a new case that it was a murder. It's disgusting. Not to mention the fact that 83,249 Americans and climbing are dying, have died. One, almost a million and a half Americans have contracted the coronavirus. And Donald Trump, not paying attention to that. He's tweeting about conspiracies and looking for credit. This election is the most important election of any of our lifetimes. Getting rid of Donald Trump should be of paramount importance for every single one of you watching this. Do I believe Joe Biden is a perfect candidate? No, he wasn't my guy. He wasn't the, the horse that I was backing. But he's what we got right now. And Donald Trump has to go. He must go. Because I can tell you what Joe Biden's not going to be doing at 9.45 in the morning, when he should be in the Oval Office doing his job, is tweeting conspiracy theories about news hosts murdering past employees. What do you think, though? 714-576-4054. Email me, daily at dollamore.com. I appreciate you guys. These are, to call them bizarre times, it just doesn't get the job done. They are uh, incredible. Incredible. Anyway, do what you can. Take care of yourselves. Take care of those around you. Be genuine. I'll see you next time.